So today I will give you a uh, user's perspective of why 3D HI for aerospace is such an important step for us to take in order to uh, provide new technology for the warfighter. This is my brief bio. I'm a Boeing Technical Fellow in Southern California. I work on advanced microelectronics and BRT. I'll introduce you to your, our organization. So I also have been very active in the IEEE and actually helped to write two of the chapters of the IEEE uh, uh, HIR or heterogeneous integration roadmap. So Boeing has uh, three different business units, Boeing Commercial Aircraft, Boeing Defense Space and Security, and Boeing Global Services. Right in the middle of this chart, you can see Boeing Research and Technology. We are the research arm of Boeing, so we, so we work and supply technology to all of our business units, and then we have a number of uh, organizations there uh, listed below, including Aurora, WISC, um, uh, HRL, and other adjacent uh, technology uh, capabilities that we have. And I'll describe to you how Boeing Research and Technology is supplying technology to advance our, our mission. So why is 3DHI such a disruptive technology for next generation microelectronics? I will try to give you a perspective from an aerospace defense perspective, okay? So as you know and seen some of this, uh, the, the, the talks earlier this morning that the commercial industry, here is an example from the uh, uh, MCP uh, with the Intel uh, advanced packaging showing advanced uh, uh, processing from FPGA and advanced uh, transceivers uh, connected with HPM uh, memory. And then uh, other big users include uh, AMD. They also have recognized the fact that you need advanced CMOS as well as advanced packaging in order to overcome the, more, the end of Moore's law to keep uh, the, the disruption going. So these are now indications of how we are transitioning from 2.5D and 3D into microsystems. So this chart shows a, actually a fork in the, in, the, in the road where in the upper path is the monolithic path we're going from the FinFET technology to gate all around and then eventually to uh, a finer and finer pitch. So Boeing is very pleased to uh, be working with Intel on Ramp C and accessing the 18A technology. This is going to be a tremendous effort for us in order to leverage that technology for the benefit of the warfighter. But you can see there are two fork, the, the other path of the road is 3DHI. So that one is uh, following a track of going to finer and finer pitch from, say, C4 bumps to copper columns to eventually hybrid copper bonding. And these will give us better performance, lower power, and, and shorter latency. And these will take us through the next decade. I think both paths are necessary. Um, uh, 3D HI is complementary to monolithic scaling. And 3D integrated materials, what's different about what we need for DOD is that we want and need to have the integration of free fives and uh, photonics and MEMS, right? The commercial world probably are primarily focusing on, on silicon. And to enable 100 to 1,000 X improvements in swap for the highest kind of workloads, including AIML. So, so our belief is that the benefits of 3D HI applies to both commercial and aerospace applications, but there are challenges, and I'll describe to you some of what those challenges are. So we really want the same thing that the commercial big users have, right? The AMDs, the NVIDIAs, and, and the Apples and the Qualcomm. So right now I can see on the first uh, part of the chart is that we want to have the lower latency, lower power, high bandwidth, and uh, you know, uh, from, from shorter interconnects, and then to have the ability to mix and match chiplets at various technology nodes. Uh, uh, we expect to see 10 to 50 times reduction in data movement energy costs, and what's really also important is IP reuse. We, we consider ourselves an aerospace uh, uh, company still a small user, so we need to be integrate our custom sauce uh, as chiplets with uh, third-party IP and with the, the biggest pieces of silicon from the commercial uh, uh, providers. And we want to see the tight integration of logic and memory and to, to look at uh, getting a higher yields because of the smaller die sizes. So do use application, just like the, the rest of the commercial world is interested in HPC, autonomy enabling AIML, energy efficient computing, high bandwidth comm, 5G and 6G and secure edge computing. In the defense world, we can leverage every single one of those use cases for our mission. However, there are some differences. 
We operate in harsh environments. Our missions are quite critical, right? And when I talk about human safety, I'm talking about having the weapons or the, the, the platform to fly. They have to work every single time that we, we need it uh, in operation. And we want to have the integration of 3.5 silicon and photonics. So the challenges for defense application includes extreme environments, more so than what the normal PDK from the foundry is able to uh, uh, provide. So we're going to have to learn more to leverage and figure out how to work around those cases where we need to work at these uh, environments. We also have this challenge of cost of technology access. I think having MPWs, having access to Ramp C, having access to MGMM and other programs will allow us to get around some of that uh, access hurdle. We definitely need to have a domestic trusted supply chain. As you heard earlier this morning, uh, what DARPA is doing, what the DOD, what the Department of Commerce is doing are going to help to help shorten that supply chain. We have a high volume a low, and high, uh, a low volume and high product mix. So this is very different from commercial world. And so we have to figure out how to leverage these capabilities within those constraints. And our products typically have very long life cycles, and we have to worry about parts obsolescence. We have to support life cycles of some platform that exceeds 40 to 50 years. For example, uh, I mentioned the B-52, which is a Boeing product. Uh, the, the airmen the flying that B-52 right now are basically are the grandchildren uh, uh, of the first one that flew it in the 1950s. And the B-52 is, is expected to fly another 30 to 40 years, which is pretty amazing. And then we have also the challenge of proprietary interfaces. So this is where uh, we want to take a look at what UCIE and other interfaces will allow us to get around to actually uh, take use of the uh, uh, chiplet ecosystem. So 3D HI will enable more capable system for aerospace and defense mission. But then we as Boeing, we are a fabulous design center. So the part that's really important to us, as, as introduced by uh, uh, Professor Dr. Lim, is the EDA tools. We, we need to take a look at what the tools are today, what they need to become for us to leverage and to solve many of these problems, including uh, operation in a harsh environment. So let me give you two examples uh, from aerospace, right? So one of the things that 3 dhi will help us enable is to make autonomous flight a reality. Here I'll show you a photo of the uh, WISC Gen 6. Um, so the, the WISC uh, 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 autonomous air taxi just took its first flight over the last uh, month. And so this is going to be a revolutionary kind of uh, transportation system that Boeing is going to bring to the consumers. But you can see that it's, uh, it's, it, it needs to be autonomous, needs to be reliable. It's going to be uh, human safety is going to be uh, key. And it is an edge platform. But then if you look at the military use case, very much similar, but different mission, longer mission, is, uh, is our MQ-25 platform. This one is an autonomous uh, uh, air tanker to provide a refueling capability to, in order to extend the range of, of, of the uh, Navy uh, fighter aircraft. And so this can see also a platform for ISR. Uh, uh, and so it's got uh, uh, edge computing, ISR sensor processing. All these things can be leveraging 3DHI. So both of these vehicles, you can see, have a number of commonalities, including uh, the need for uh, uh, high safety standards and then to operate autonomous uh, flight. Um, so basically, AIML is going to be a big part of both of these systems. And then we also want to take a look at how we can get to uh, a highly reliability system with no single point of failure. So advanced semiconductors plus 3DHI will pave the way for affordable and reliable navigation, C2, and operational capabilities for a number of uh, ubiquitous autonomous flight systems for both commercial and DOD systems. So let me get to the 3D uh, uh, HI EDA aspect. So there are many challenges, not only for commercial systems, but if you talk about autonomous systems, and I mentioned safety and reliability is prime. In fact, probably higher priority than even performance is that we, we want to have a seamless integration into a model-based system engineering framework. We want to look at a, a, a modeling of a multi-scale systems, IC packaging, exceeding six orders of magnitude from nanometers to meters. So right now, the EDA tools are, are, are just struggling to do that, right? We don't have high, a high, high performance computing system to, to, to leverage uh, the, the accuracy we want, the fidelity we want, in order to ensure that we have a reliable system before we build it. 
And certainly, we, want, we need to have multi-physics capability to couple looking at the effects of electrical, thermal, mechanical effects and analyses. So again, not only in the commercial domain, but looking at harsh environments. We need to uh, also support multi-EDA tools. There are really no single tool set that does everything. And so we want to have a multi-vendor approach. We want to look at the best available tools, the best practices, and then to leverage standardized uh, databases. Multi-PDKs, I uh, already mentioned this morning, we need to support different technologies ranging from silicon, silicon germanium, and, and 3.5 and MEMS. So these will be very challenging. And this is what we're going to be depend on, the tool maker and also the foundry to provide that. So uh, multi-PDK, I already mentioned that. Uh, uh, we need to integrate custom IP with third-party IP. And then certainly the uh, hardware and software verification is going to be a big problem. This is going to be a multi-team effort. So in today's system, we are talking about 2D electronics that are flying today uh, in flight, but we're looking forward to this uh, tomorrow's system in 3DHI. So to the use of these technologies already underway in the MGMM, and we're going to look at extreme environments, multi-PTK, standardized interfaces. So predictive 3D aware uh, tools will ensure optimal designs with lower resources and cost. So this is a really interesting slide um, I, uh, to show you. Uh, th this is a multi-dimensional problem. In the z-axis, right, we're starting off at the 2D uh, integration. Uh, now we're in the 2.5D world, uh, uh, reaching into 3D, and then 3D HI, I make a differentiation there. 3D HI, really, I mean talking about integration of three fives. 3D is uh, just probably mostly silicon. And then perhaps one day we'll get back to truly monolithic uh, 3D with epitaxial regrowth. But then you look at the other axes, right? So uh, in terms of applications, they're going to be increasingly complex problems we need to solve with higher uh, compute capability, higher bandwidth from ranging from 5G to edge computing, HPC, and eventually probably the uh, most demanding workload, AIML. And then on the, uh, the x-axis, you can see technology. Technology is very important, right? We can go down the uh, uh, different technology nodes, but in terms of heterogeneous integration, there are going to be these kind of problems I mentioned here. Design for X. What is X? Right? Design for test, establishing no good in chiplets. Already mentioned this morning is that uh, that's going to be really important. Uh, the chiplets are not only expensive, but the fact that they have in, uh, internal interfaces, how do we determine that we have no good chiplets and a no good microsystem? This is a major challenge that we need to figure out how to solve before we actually build the chiplets. So new design techniques designed for graceful degradation are all going to be part of that uh, solution space. And the design for verification, we need to have standardized uh, chiplet interfaces. So most of, the, most of the interfaces today, whether AIB uh, or bundle wire or PCI, I mean UCIE, are still primarily two-dimensional standards. So we need a new generation of standards. How do you communicate in the vertical dimension? Uh, I think perhaps the UCIE uh, will be looking at that uh, maybe in version two or later. But that's going to be important because we want to leverage the 3D ecosystem when those communications become standardized. Design for thermal reliability. As I, as I mentioned already, if you're talking about mission safety, a criticality of, of the mission, we have to take care of the things that ensure that we have uh, 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 the reliability for that mission, whether the mission is two minutes or 30, 30 hours or, or 10, 10 years. So those are the type of things that we need to understand from a device physics point of view and also from a, a, a mechanical a stress point of view as well as, as thermal. So we need to solve these problems before we can start inserting them into systems. And then finally, design for security and safety. So right now, uh, some of the work that's being done there led by OSD is uh, the MQA framework is that how do we ensure that as we go and adopt new technologies that are not necessarily in a trusted uh, foundry environment in order to ensure that we have no malware or, 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 or things like that that we don't want in that system, then as well as looking at things that ensure that uh, it operates as planned. So with that, I think that is my last slide. And of course, I, you know, number, number one challenge for design is thermal. So with that, I think this will be my last slide. So in the past, right, decades ago, as you mentioned, the system engineering V looks something like that. But right now, this is your grandfather's system engineering V. So what we need today is a new system engineering approach 
uh, to, for the warfighter is to enable new kinds of architecture, AIML, integration of logic and memory, high bandwidth communications, and then ISR data uh, processing in order to do look at things, optical RF or, or other kinds of detectors. The challenges are to increase uh, integration of free five and silicon as required so that we can go end to end from analog into digital and back to analog. So the whole concept uh, now, instead of having system engineering B, is model-based system engineering using uh, new techniques and new architectures, paradigms like, like digital twins and physical design that extends across six orders of magnitude and dimension. Uh, to su support our requirements for platforms, our mission electronics, subsystem design, and an ETA tool is the, really the key thing in order for us to adopt 3D IC technology from materials, substrates, packaging, hardware, and software in order to meet our mission. So in the, in the next world that we're talking about is looking at a model-based system engineering, digital twin technology, where we still want to take uh, 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 system requirements on the left and then turn them into something that we can simulate, model, and then also uh, uh, do uh, uh, various trade studies before we start putting in, into silicon. So the new paradigm, this package is the system. Closing the gap between the virtual world and the real world is provide uh, safety, quality, productivity, cost, resilience, and customer satisfaction. So this is really the new paradigm, and we're really excited to be part of this uh, journey. Multi-fix, physics-based EDA tools are needed to increase fidelity, assimilation, and to reduce risk. Thank you very much.